Hey lovies and welcome back to Crazy But Not Dangerous. I'm Shorty Vaughn and welcome to a very shorty Christmas part one. Yay, hooray, yippee, skippy. What are we gonna be doing today? We're gonna make my mama's fudge, her holiday fudge. It wasn't the holidays without it. So starting about a week before Thanksgiving, my mom and dad would start their holiday baking and both of them loved it and both of them um, really made the same recipes but they would fight all the time about whose was better yep no, mine has more love in it well, mine has more vanilla and that trumps love yeah they would go back and forth on the holiday baking fighting like cats and dogs but we had plenty of yum yums so about a week before thanksgiving two weeks after new year's we were enjoying all of their holiday baking and it would just sit on the counter and everyone came in and you helped yourself and made a little goodie plate and filled up and it always smelled like something was in the oven and it was just delightful all in all i would say they probably made 30 to 35 pounds of fudge every holiday season and it is your very standard um, marshmallow fudge recipe. For those of you who have seen my Tales from the Steps tool about my mom's um, recipe box, yeah, there were only like four or five recipes in there, but multiples of the same recipe over and over again. I'll go ahead and link that up here. Anyhow, yeah, uh, we're gonna be using the recipe from her box with a few improvements. Now they thought about whose was the best, but really and truly, I will tell you that mine is the most superior fudge. Yeah, no, no need to beat around the bush. Mine's terrific and it's got a few, um, you know, a, f a few little um, tweaks to it. And uh, well, anyhow, let's get down to it, gay right. Now the first thing that I will tell you is that you kind of have to get all of your things in order. And you'll need a really big bowl for the mixing. You will need a prepared baking dish. This is the largest one I have. This is going to make about four pounds of fudge. And I think this is the best one. That's a 10 by 17. Also a jelly roll pan will work really well. You may need two. I have a small hand mixer here. That is my preferred end of the recipe. Combining all of the ingredients tool. I have a little bit of spray. I'm gonna spray in my pan. I have five cups of sugar. And this is just plain granulated sugar, um, but I am going to make it extra finely granulated by processing it in my food processor, just a zzz, 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 and that's it. Um, 12 ounces of semi-sweet chocolate chips, your choice, some vanilla, two and one quarters cup of milk, some k corn syrup, light or dark, it does not matter. One um, package, one container of the Jet Puffed Marshmallows. Marshmallow cream, that's my favorite. And one stick of butter, and I have um, kind of chopped mine up into little bits here. And those are the things that you will need for your holiday fudge. I will tell you that before you get this process started, go to the bathroom, get yourself something to drink, wash your hands thoroughly, make sure everybody's needs are satisfied because once you start, there's not really any breaks until you end. And it's a good, you know, 35, 40 minute process and we'll take it step by step. It will be just fine. And this is no hassle, no fuss, no mess. You don't even need a thermometer to do this. It's super easy. So let's, let's get down to it. The first thing that I'm going to do is get started with my two and one half cups of milk. 
Now, whatever kind of milk that you have, whole 2% skim, I don't think it really matters. I'm going to put this in here, and then I'm going to put this on a 5. I'm going to keep my eagle eye on it because I want this to reduce by half. So it's going to have a little line in here. Once your milk starts to get hot, it will have like a little skim on it. And just watch that to reduce by about half. And that is going to replace the um, evaporated milk that the recipe originally called for. Now, if you don't want to reduce your milk, get yourself a can of evaporated milk. That'll be just fine. Um, I think that evaporated milk prices in my area have gotten completely outrageous. So I'm not buying them. I'm using the 2% whole would be even better you use what you got or get the can of evaporated milk anyhow if i had the can of evaporated milk i would still start to heat that up so probably if i had the can of evaporated milk i would only turn it on a three or a four because you would not be reducing it but i'm reducing my regular milk and a regular can of evaporated milk is about 12 ounces so I have um, about I have about 20 ounces and I want that to just go ahead and reduce by about half and that's going to be just fine. All right, while that's doing that, I'm going to go ahead and give my um, sugar a little zip, zip, zip in the food processor because I think, first of all, about the sugar on sale and as you can see, it's kind of clumpy. That happens sometimes and I want it to be really smooth and finely granulated because it is going to make the absolute smoothest fudge that way and it's just something you can do just real quick in your food processor if I didn't have a food processor maybe I would go ahead and maybe put this through one of those old-fashioned sieves or something like that or you could always just buy the regular extra fine granulated sugar but over here like it's not very much it's only like two pounds and it's almost six dollars so I'm way too cheap for that all right so here we go perfectly clean food processor I am putting all five cups of my granulated sugar in there and like I said it's just gonna be a real quick zip 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 and then we're on to the we're on to the stove. Okay. That should make it extra finely granulated. Mine has no more lumps in it. Yay hooray. And it looks terrific. Yay hooray. I'm gonna just go ahead and set this off to the side. I'm going to spray my pan and get this all prepared because once you get this going it is going to go a little bit fast and your fudge will start to set almost immediately um, once that comes off of the once that comes off of the stove so you want to be ready you want to we're just going to have that over here waiting in the wings if you don't like the spray just use a little bit of butter. It'll be just fine. Yep. All right. My milk's going. That's heating up. It's going to be terrific. Now I have my big bowl. My big silver bowl. I'm using this stainless steel bowl because to me, this is part of the process of setting your fudge. That um, bowl will help cool the mixture off and get it setting really quick. PDQ. And you want your fudge to set. Yeah, you want a real good firm set so it's candy-like and it doesn't get all melty and gooey in your hand. I have 12 ounces of chocolate chips in here. I got these out. I got these over at the Costco. I got these over at the Costco. 
dropped a few on the floor. I wanted to make sure I got them picked up because I don't want pig pen to eat them. Lord have mercy on us all. That would be such a mess. I have a sister. I'm not going to name names. I'm going to protect the innocent. But I have a sister who has tried to make this fetch multiple times. Mul for, for decades she has tried to make this fetch. And she has never been successful that I know of. And most of the time it has not set. Or has not set as firmly as my mom and dad's fetch. And it's because she does not understand the two-step process. One is the heating of things, and then the other are the cool ingredients that you dump the warm ingredients into. That's her first problem. I've also had her fudge where she made it with um, milk chocolate chips, and it was too sweet. And, um, yeah, I couldn't eat it. Nobody else could eat it. Certainly didn't taste like mom's. Um, she also made it once with sweetened condensed milk instead of evaporated milk. And that was uh, not good either. Yeah, that was way too sweet. That was terrible. So I am just going to scoop out as much of this as possible. Because really, the marshmallow and the marshmallow fudge, that's just, that's good, good stuff. You can add nuts. If you, I was going to add nuts, I would put them into the cool ingredients or I would sprinkle them on top. You can add peanut butter and if I was going to do that, I would go ahead and put them into the cool ingredients into this pan, into this mixing bowl. Um, you could add a little bit of peppermint and extract. That would be delicious. And again, I would put it into this bowl. Keep your cool ingredients cool, keep your hot ingredients hot, and your fudge will set like a champ every single time. Anyhow, my poor sister, she can't make, she can't make this to save her life, and I don't know if she's given up or not. Hope she keeps on trying. Now to the cold ingredients, I am also going to add one teaspoon of vanilla extract. I'm using my good vanilla from Mexico, and I do give this a shake up because all of those terrific vanilla beans are settled at the bottom, and I want them in my fudge, not at the bottom of my, my bottle. I have a one half teaspoon measure here, because I still cannot find my one teaspoon measure. So I'm just using this half. If you like more vanilla, you know you don't believe in measuring with a teaspoon or what have you. You're gonna measure that vanilla with your heart. Baby, go right on ahead. It'll be just fine. This is starting to come up in temperature and I'm gonna go ahead and give it a stir because I don't want my milk to scald on the bottom. I do not want my, my fudge to taste like scalded milk and I'm gonna turn the temperature down to like a three because I want it to reduce, but I don't want it to scald. I don't wanna boil it over because that will make, oh, I'll have to take the oven apart and get all in there and what, it'll be terrible. Nobody likes that. So just keep on reducing. It'll be fine. Give it a little stir up every now and then. It'll be okay. And when you get to about the 12 ounce mark, well then you're done. And if you're concerned about it, make sure you have a little measuring cup handy. And then you can just pour it up. You measure a cup and a half, you're in like Flynn. So in here we have our vanilla our um, chocolate chips, they're semi-sweet, and our uh, marshmallow fluff, and that's all that's gonna go into this one. Yay, hooray, we're gonna set it over to the side. 
I'm going to put the vanilla away. I don't think we're going to need the baking spray anymore. I broke my lid. Uh, yeah, I just like it better with the lid. I like my sprayer, you know, covered as best as possible. We're just getting by. It's all right. So clean as you go so you don't end up with a terrible mess. Because this is work. It's worth it. But you don't want to have a whole lot of cleanup after. Just checking on my milk, making sure that we're doing okay. Now, get yourself a really good spoon. I like a metal spoon because it's got a long handle on it. This is a big pot so that my milk can reduce very rapidly. But also, you want to make this in a larger pot. All the ingredients would surely fit into a smaller pot, but once that sugar starts to heat up with the milk and the butter and the Cairo syrup, it is going to be like lava. And you don't want a short spoon and you don't want to have that sugar pop up and burn your hands. Yeah, you don't want it. You don't want it to bubble oil over and cause like a major safety hazard. So, you know, this is like a four quart stock pot and it's, this is what I make it in every year. Oh, if you see somebody walking back there, Andrew's working in his shop again, and he's going back and forth and what have you. It's not Michael Myers coming to get me. Don't be alarmed. Anyhow, yep, our milk is just low simmer. It's just a low simmer. And so we've got our k syrup. Go ahead and put that out here. And we've got our butter and our sugar and those are going to be the elements for the hot mix and then over here we've just got our handy dandy hand mixer our measuring cup to see if we need to measure our hot mix or our, our milk and then we've got this bowl and so that just sets on the sides over there just takes a little break and it will bring it out here in probably about 15 20 minutes once I get my milk reduced now I like to preheat my milk before adding it in all of the other ingredients whether I'm using the uh, evaporated milk from the can or if I'm evaporating my own milk I like that milk hot because it is going to speed up the whole process of getting to the hard ball stage. <clears throat> now, if we were using a candy thermometer, on your candy thermometer, you're going to see a little, you know, soft ball, hard ball, hard crack, soft crack. Yeah, we would want to bring it to the hard ball stage. I don't use a candy thermometer because my mother never did she had her own method for um, timing the just exact right temperature of your hot sugar mixture. And we'll just be using that because it is super simple and all you need is a clock. It has always worked for me. It should always work for you. And this milk is reducing PDQ. So, yay, hooray. Just making sure it doesn't scorch on the bottom. How are y'all doing today? You got anything fun or exciting going on? You doing anything with your lovelies today? Are you recovering from a party from last night? Yeah, all of these good things. Maybe you're out shopping. Maybe you're just taking it easy. Yeah, all, all possibilities. Andrew slept exceptionally late. Good for him. Um, I was up at the crack of dawn. It's almost nap time. And uh, baby sister went out to run some errands. And she's going to pick up Cookie and Chris over at the airport and bring them home. So I'm going to see them here in a little bit. Maybe, maybe they'll come in and I will be finished with my fudge. I know they're going to want a piece. 
Okay, let's see how we're doing on our milk. And I want one and one half cup of milk. Now, if you found that you have boiled yours down too much, don't sweat it. Just add a little more milk to it. And there we go, one and one half cup. That didn't even take five minutes. So I think that's worth the savings of not buying the evaporated milk. Now I'm gonna turn my burner to a five. I'm gonna put this back on and I'm going to add my whole stick of butter. I'm gonna add my five cups of sugar. And I'm going to add two tablespoons of the Cairo syrup. Like I said, light or dark, it doesn't really matter. It's a matter of preference. I think they taste, I think they taste pretty darn similar and I think they're pretty darn good. Okay. And now is the hard part. So I have mine exactly on a five because I want medium heat and I am just gonna stir continuously, making sure that I'm getting the sides and the bottom and everything and that syrup and that sugar and the butter are all combining beautifully with the milk. Yay, hooray. And you can't stop, that's the thing. So if you have tired arms, if you don't think you're a good stirrer, yeah, this is when you would get some help, someone to take over midway because you will be stirring for about 15 to 20 minutes on that medium heat. And if you stop stirring, well, everything can crystallize or you might end up burning the um, concoction and none of that is good. So just keep stirring use a good spoon something that you're happy with something that can get into all of the cook, crooks and crannies for sure now this pot does not have a any kind of a lip at the bottom no indentation because i don't want my sugars to get in there and may not be able to get them out with the spoon and stir them throughout because that will burn and then my fudge will not have a good taste. So yeah, if you if you don't think you're a good stir, make this with a friend or a loved one, that kind of thing. Make sure you're taking care of all the things that might need your attention uh, because I won't walk away from it. I'll just stand here and stir until we've got the right result. And if I get splash ups on the side, I just go ahead and stir that crystallized sugar in there because I want that all really good and melty. There are no bubbles right now. It just is what it is. Bring you on over and show you. All right. So, yep, yeah, that's just what it is. Just no bubbles. No, nothing, just getting everything incorporated. And yeah, I'm just gonna stir this until everything's hot and heated up and everything. That warm milk really will speed up the process. It's taking us from like 35, 45 minutes down to 25, 35. So it takes about 10 good minutes right off the top by warming your milk. You could even warm your milk in the microwave if you were using like a sweetened condensed milk. Absolutely. Okay, I have been stirring for about 10 minutes and we are just now starting to get some bubbles and it's time to add a simmer and that's just fine. We're just gonna keep stirring all the way around, up onto the sides, back and forth and around and around until your hand feels like it's gonna fall off. And then use the other hand. 
and now it's getting a little bit more vigorous. It's still a light pale color. This also works best if you have a very good heavy bottom flat bottom pan. Um, I made this with a friend one time and her pan was warped and it took a very long time to come to a good boil because we weren't getting full connectivity to the burner. Okay, so we're just gonna keep more vigorous. It's more vigorous now. And we're just gonna keep going until we get to a very, very vigorous boil. And you are going to see a color change as that sugar and those milk fat solids um, start to caramelize a little bit. When we get there, we are going to start our timing process. So once we get to a very vigorous boil, um, we are going to time it for exactly seven minutes on your medium temperature. My, my bubbles are kind of small right now. Let me bring you all down to Funky Town here and see if I can show you. My bubbles are kind of small right now and I want them to be a little bit bigger and we're looking for that color change too. So you, you're thinking that this is a good boil, that you're uh, off to the races, just keep going, keep stirring. You'll see that my bubbles are getting bigger. Yeah, so my, and the color is getting darker. Yay, hooray, we want that really good and hot. And let's see here, we're gonna turn on our timer for seven minutes. Okay, and that's exactly it. We've got a boil that we can't stir down. We've got the larger size bubbles. And we are just going to keep stirring this for the next seven minutes. And then we're going to be on to our last step. And I know it looks like a couple of steps and a lot of work. It is completely worth it. This is the best fudge. I just love it. And yeah, I I won't be enjoy I won't be enjoying it this year. It's not on my list of possible holiday items. And honestly, I have no idea how you would make this diabetic friendly. I don't think it's possible. But um, if you have a great fudge recipe that's diabetic friendly, leave it down below. I'll give it a whirl. All right, one minute, and I don't know if you can see it, but it's much darker in color, more of like a light caramel color than the white milky color that we started out with. And it does have that rich caramely smell now, yay hooray. And it is considerably thicker. We are almost there. Seven minutes. Works every time. Come on, baby, you can do it. Because my hand's about ready to fall off. This one last minute always seems like it takes 10 minutes. Why is that? Oh! Oh, okay, we're done. Turn it off. Fantastic. And now, as quickly as you can, as quickly as you can, go ahead and pour in away from you. Remember, this is like molten lava. Go ahead and Pour that hot mixture on top of the cold mixture. There we go. Let's get it all in there, every little bit. Yay, hooray. There we go. I'm putting it on a cool burner 
to go ahead and cool off before I set it in some water because I don't want my pan to warp. That would be a shame. Now I've got my hand mixture and I am going to go ahead and just get that going. Now be careful because this will be very hot on the bottom. So make sure you're grabbing it from the side. Because I just had, ooh, ooh, that's hot. I just had, ooh, that hot moment. Nobody wants an injury for Christmas. And I've got a little marshmallow on the side of my bowl. I'm going to go ahead and just scrape that down in there. I want to make sure it gets all well incorporated. Because that marshmallow is just too good to leave behind. And as you're stirring it together, as you're using your mix mixer, you're going to feel it. You're going to feel some resistance. You're going to feel it already starting to set up. It's going to be fantastic. all mixed in there. I don't want any white streaks if I can help it. I don't think they're terrible, but I really want all that marshmallow just well incorporated in there. You could add marshmallows to this. You could make it like Rocky Road with nuts and marshmallows and all those things. Absolutely nothing stopping you. All right, and as you can see, it is very thick and already starting to set. So I know we are going to have a very successful batch of fudge. Got my prepared pan here. And like I said, these final steps, you're cooking with gas, baby. You gotta get it in the bowl before it sets. And I just pour it right on in there. Now, one of the greatest pleasures we had, oh, there's a little marshmallow. Let's go ahead and mix that in. Sometimes that happens. One of the greatest pleasures when we were kids was licking the bowl because it's already starting to set in the bowl and my mom and dad were scooping just as fast as they could. Some would get set in there and then all of us would hang out at the edge of the kitchen. Once you heard the mixer go on you knew that yeah it was time to take your place at the counter for licking the bowl so they would pour it out we would lick the bowl and then generally they would wash the bowl and start the next batch of fudge so here we go Yay, and now i'm just going to go ahead and spread it in here evenly so that each piece that I cut is just about the same size. Now, I'm not getting the measuring tape out or anything like that. It'll be just fine. No worries. And, yep, our fudge is already pretty much already set. Now, if for some reason your fudge does not set. Don't worry about it. <clears throat> Get some small half pint measure, uh, mason jars and go ahead and pour your non-set fudge in there and give it as a hot fudge sauce for Christmas. And that will be absolutely delicious. Well, let me tell you, you don't eat ice cream, um, a little dollop of that in your coffee, won't hurt a bit, baby. I promise. Okay. Now is the time if you wanted to put um, nuts on top or something like that. Go right on ahead. Treat yourself. Nuts, marshmallows, what have you. 
whatever your topping wants to be. Maybe you want to um, spread a little extra peanut butter or something like that throughout or on top. Go for it. It would be fine. But we're not making peanut butter fudge today. We're just making regular because everybody has potluck this week. My, my niece, my sister, my friend Kim, everyone's got potluck. Everybody wanted a little bit of fudge, but I don't want to put peanut butter in it or nuts on top because of, you know, food allergies or what have you. I think, you know, it's better safe than sorry when you're taking it somewhere. All right, well, pretty much my fudge is already set. I'm just going to leave it here on the counter to cool, and I'm going to see if Andrew wants to lick the spoon. Yeah, absolutely. All right, my lovelies. Well, there it is. My mom's uh, homemade holiday fudge. Yay, hooray. It feels like she's right here with me making it. And, and it's a great holiday feeling. My heart feels so full right now. So fun. Um, I'm not going to enjoy any of this, you know, but um, still glad to make it. Still glad to you know, remember my mom and her special holiday traditions. I hope that you're enjoying your holiday season. Tonight we're going to watch my absolute favorite Christmas movie. Now, my favorite Christmas movie is a little bit controversial. Um, my favorite Christmas movie is Die Hard. Yeah, one and two. And we might watch both of them tonight, but I am going to watch them. That's my favorite Christmas movie. I just loved, have loved them for decades, and I, I love the thrill of it. Also, I listened to Cher's new holiday album this morning, and that's something else. If you go to YouTube Music, and the, the song that I loved was DJ Play Me a Christmas Song or something like that. Anyhow, fantastic. If I spent money on music, I might actually buy that. Yeah. Bring you back when I cut this and I'll show you what a piece looks like. Yay, hooray. All right, so I saved you all the spoons. Go ahead and do a taste test. That's the best part of the whole fudge experience mm -hmm. is the, uh, yeah. Yeah, licking the spoon, eating the bowl. Oh, Cookie, you just got a piece. Good for you, girl. <laughs> Say hello, oh, say hello, say hello to YouTube. Hi YouTube. Hi YouTube. Hey. Yes, I'm still alive. That's my little niece Cookie. That's her wonderful, handsome boyfriend, um, Chris. Not only is he handsome, but he's a good guy, and that's a great combination. That's Andrew. For those of you, say hi Andrew. There you hello, go. Hello Andrew. That yeah yeah. yeah. Don't start that. Don't start that, mister. Anyhow, these are my babies. These are my babies. Good fudge? Excellent. Great fudge. Excellent. Good way to kick off the holiday? Mm -hmm. Hot diggity. All right, my lovies. Well, the fudge is a super success. Yay, hooray. Hope you're kicking off your holiday season with something totally yummy. Be good, be careful, look both ways. I'll see you next time. Bye now. What are you doing back there? <laughs>